Hey, thanks so much for downloading today's episode on this show. I talk about a spider who's giving me some trouble and the poor lady who killed herself with a metal straw. Plus, an epic story about a man who sold his wife's bike. This and our ugly and awkward moments of the week. Thank you so much, shoplippandclip.com and Prime Days, July 15th and 16th. Thank you so much for supporting us. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie? It exists in my mind! Paula? A little squirt around the perimeter may help. Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. It's episode 386. Uh, we are sisters who podcast. Yes, and we are—I uh, can't think of what I was going to say. I completely <laughs> lost my train of thought. I was going to say something, and now I have absolutely no concept. Well, my air conditioner just went on, and oh, so I'm okay. like, "Why is it on already?" Because it's not even noon. But anyway, it's going to be a hot one in the town tonight. Apparently, hot in the city. Hot in the city tonight. What's that other song that I like a lot? Oh, hot child in the city. It kind of sounds the same. Running wild and looking pretty. I know, but I've always loved that song. It's old, really old, but I love it. Anyway, the other night we had a big family dinner because we were celebrating Mackenzie's adoption day. So Daryl adopted Mackenzie seven years ago. And so every year we do something special to celebrate. And so we decided to have a big family dinner. We got Mackenzie a really nice piece of jewelry that she can wear. And, um, you know, it was a really great day. But we were talking about all of our pets because um, I don't remember who it was. Somebody they knew or something, their, their dog died. And it was really old. And I said, yeah, that's, you know, that happens. But, you know. Oh, we were talking about it. I said, I put down every animal we've ever had. Like, it's been my job. And I don't know. I mean, it's always very difficult. And I'm always, you know, obviously grieving. And it's sad and all that stuff. But when you're kind of taking the responsibility because it eases the pain of your children or your husband or whatever, there's something about doing that that kind of lessens the the devastation. Because Mm -hmm. you're protecting everybody from... What is very difficult, something that it's very difficult to do. Right. So uh, we were talking about that. And then Malia later, she goes, I'm I'm really starting to regret that we got all of our pets at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because they're all going to (laughs) die within like a year of each other. And I said, yeah, well, that's what happens. But, you know, they don't know it. So it's just we are the ones that have to go through one hit after the other. So, yeah, I mean, if they're healthy, we lost our pets at different times. I mean, we got Calvin and Toby at the same time, but Calvin mm-hmm. unfortunately died unexpectedly. So right, he died, right. I think, when he was five or six. Well, there's always that weird anomaly. But in yeah. general, if your pets live their fullest lifespan, mm-hmm. uh, they tend to go, you know, around this. Cause especially if you get the same kind. And, you know, the other thing is, is that animals kind of die at the same time because they were that was their little pack. Probably. And so their pack starts to drop off and, you know, that's that. So I'm kind of anyway. worried about because I, I have a feeling that Bo is going to die before Pablo. And I, I just, think so. I don't know what Pablo's going to do because we can't even take Bo without we can't take Bo to the <laughs> vet without Pablo because Pablo just runs around the house like whining the whole time that he's gone because he just is like he doesn't know what to do. Uh, well, Pablo will probably successfully get into your skin. Eventually. And he will just be like a baby Joey and I will live have in to your make skin. a roux pouch out of my stomach fat. And, and that will be- basically be what Pablo will do. <laughs> I'll end up on botched and be like, I have a special request. Dr. I would DeBrow. like you to create a pouch. <laughs> I'm sorry. I would like you to create a pocket of my skin so that I may put this dog I- who has always wanted... I don't even know what would happen if Pablo literally <laughs> successfully got as close to you as he feasibly could. <laughs> like, he would probably die from happiness. I yeah, I don't really know what would happen. His name should be Joey. <laughs> I know. We didn't even know. 
Yeah. Like, and he just annoys me. And I just, I'll say, like, stop licking me. And then he'll just do like, <laughs> just like one little <laughs> lick. And I'm like, what? God, and he'll like just... turn his head and kind of blink his eyes a lot. <laughs> I'm just like, God. <laughs> I don't know how you do chihuahuas personally. I just, I can't. I can't well, do once it. they give you no options, then you just have to find a way, you know? I would it, never adopt I would never adopt one. <laughs> never. I know you rescued him and stuff. So, I mean, I, I give you kudos for all of that. I just personally, I would never get one. I just one. can't help it. He's just, he's so ridiculous. <laughs> he is ridiculous. All right. Well, Daryl has been traveling significantly. He yes. travels three to four days a week for the last two weeks. And he's leaving again on Monday, this coming Monday, for another three days. And then hopefully... Uh, he'll get a little bit of a break before he goes on to another travel jag all over wherever he's going. It is an adjustment. I am not accustomed to this frequency, but I'm not really being left to my own devices. Mm-hmm. I have a house full of people, and Daryl, because he is not much different than Pablo, uh, will call me and want to talk for hours at the end of the day and i'm like look i'm cool with it but i i can't even miss you because we're in touch frequently and that's cool but you know i just i feel like i did when i had small children like i went to take a shower and my phone rang twice and my text messages went off three times right and then so i'm doing this new yoga class and it's it's an at-home yoga class and it's really really very difficult Mm -hmm. and i'm i'm loving the challenge it's 30, it can be anywhere from 15 to, to 60 minutes, and right now I'm doing 30 minutes. Okay. I can't even do 30 minutes without a knock on the door, phone calls, text messages, 30 minutes. And I'm like, this is why parent, this is why mothers age so rapidly, because if they're trying to do any kind of self-care, they're given no opportunity, or it's so minimal. I, it's unbelievable. I thought that it would end when they grew up. But it's just as demanding. If you just weren't so opposed to the idea of a mistress or something, I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm like, not, or like a wet God. nurse or something. I don't know. I just no. Like you it. know what? Daryl's the least of it. He's the least of it. It's just that when he's gone, he gets a little needy in the evening, which I get. By the way, he was in L- he he's been in L.A. for the last two weeks, and he called me kind of drunk the other night and I said what have you been up to he goes oh I was in the bar downstairs I'm like this is not going to end well for you was and he's he like by, no what was he by himself yes but the mm-hmm. bartender no the bartender knows him and and it's a very lively bar and a lot of B celebrities go there he met the voice of Squidward from Spongebob Squarepants Wow! <laughs> and they had cocktails and then he met Captain Lee from that yacht show on Bravo Never heard of it. Really? Well, apparently we're, well, I know the show, but I don't, I've never really, I've watched like one episode and went, I can't watch this anymore. This is so terrible. But uh, Captain Lee is a very, um, he's a very well-known B-list reality show celeb. Like people were walking up to him and asking if they could get his autograph and take pictures. Wow. And Daryl turns and he goes, I am. I feel like an asshole. I didn't know he was kind of famous. And the captain turns around. He goes, don't say that. He goes, I don't like this at all. But he loves being he loves being on the show. He lives in Florida. He's been and he does like mega yachts, which is different than regular yachts. And he said, like, it's they're worth almost a billion dollars. Some of these yachts that he's that he's captained. I mean, there are people like he goes, celebrities would be Z list on the level of rich that he deals with on a regular basis. He said the show is nothing (laughs) compared to his real life. Oh, like who he actually charters or whatever. Right. And they some of these people are so wealthy that they don't even uh, sail their yachts to where they want a vacation. They have them shipped to wherever they want the boat to sit and then they fly to their location, stay in a hotel, and then when their yacht arrives, then they go on the yacht. Oh. It's a level of wealth that very few people What's the point of having of. a boat, then? Paula, what's the point of anything? I, I, I don't even understand that level of wealth. Actually, I mean... I wouldn't even find it comfortable being on a boat, to be honest. I mean... I don't know. I mean... Everything it, seems it's, small. 
I mean, I guess if these you're, yachts you know, are on a not billion small. dollar boat, but I mean, I just much rather be at you know like some billion dollar resort or something like that. It's basically that's not to on me, the water. It sounds like to me like it's a private um, cruise ship, basically. I guess, yeah. I think they're basically mini cruise ships, and they Without, just you know the fecal matter on the deck that's going right. to give you some sort of weird flu. And I'm kind of all about that. Mm. <laughs> I think I'd be okay with that. I think I'd be like, if I can afford my own baby cruise ship, I'll do it. That would be the only way I would do it. I'd still be afraid of rogue waves and stuff, but I mean, at least. I mean, I get you know, the idea of just keeping with it at, like, at harbor and not actually going anywhere. Well, I mean, yeah. if you're in the Greek Isles or if you're in Positano or you're somewhere really beautiful, you know, you definitely would want to see the coastline. I think it'd be yeah. beautiful. I don't know. Anyway, any places. he met. So he met them. Anyway, he I said, you sound drunk. He goes, I've only had a couple cocktails. A couple. How many have you had? He goes, well, I had three old fashions with Captain Lee. And I said, Who the hell okay. does he think he is? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you've been gone too long. You've been gone too long. Old so anyway. fashions. When did the fuck did he start drinking those? Oh, forever. He's been. He loves. We both like them, but he. That's his. That's his drink. Oh that's my his, god. That's How his cocktail. Funny. Oh yes, he's been drinking those for quite some time. That is funny. Yes. So anyway, uh, so while he's gone is when I'm sure that I will come across some kind of dead creature, or Bodega will kill a skunk, or something of that nature will occur. I thought you agreed to go on one of these trips. I I. I would, I, but I, I don't. I, 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 <laughs> I will, but I don't want to go to LA. I, there's nothing for me to do there. Gina, there's what am I going to do there? What, what, what am I going shopping? to do? Every, no, he stays in Burbank. There's nothing there. Oh, yeah, there's it's nothing not, there. What am I going to do? Go to Universal Studios by I myself? Would. I would. <laughs> no, uh, no, it's hot, and I go to Hogwarts by myself. First of all, I don't give a shit about that. I'm only going. I'm going to Hogwarts this year with my daughter because she's never been and she's a big Harry Potter fan. But other than that, I don't. I just don't like the amusement park thing. He's well, you can go on a tour. I'm like a tour of what? He goes, well, you can oh. go to you can go to Warner Brothers and you can tour the Big Bang Theory and blah blah blah. And I said alone on some kind of shuttle. I'm like, no. Talk about a big loser. <laughs> Why would I do any of those things? I mean. Send me to a library or something, and maybe you know I'll chill. <laughs> yeah, I don't I like touristy that. crap. I just don't want to do it. And then, really, what kind of shopping am I going to do in Burbank? Well, not in I Burbank. I mean, no. if you were by like the Beverly Center, that'd be different. But he's like, oh, you can. I'll rent a car. And I'm like, I am not going to sit on the 405 for two mm-hmm. hours. Come on. So anyway, you know, I'll Uber. But I, you know, he, he's like, well, I my first appointment's not till four o'clock. We can go to Disneyland for a minute. And I'm like, I. All of this sounds bad. All of it. You can't go to Disneyland for a minute. I'm not doing it, Paula. It's so I look, I said he's going to San Diego at some point, he's going to Austin at some point, and I said, Now those sound like trips I can find something to do. Sure. San Diego, I have friends, the beach, you know, downtown San Diego is amazing. This the gaslight district, gas lamp district. I don't know, it's something gas district. <laughs> and then Austin, I've never been, so I would love to go there. Anyway, so it will happen. It's just LA is like Yeah, it's true. So anyway, while Daryl's off, you know, having cocktails with Captain Lee, <laughs> I'm struggling with sleep. And so I finally am getting ready to fall asleep. It's like one in the morning and I flip over to the other side to get really super comfy and I get a, a vision <laughs> of something on the wall. Oh, I thought you were going to say on your bed. No. And I look up and it's one of the biggest spiders I've ever seen. And I thought, am I hallucinating? Am I really seeing a very large spider right above my headboard? I, I'll tell you on my ugly and awkward moment what I was doing when I flipped over. I wasn't masturbating. masturbating. Okay, I was just going to say, like I'm like, well, no, um, no, no, no. I'm going to take a wild guess here. <laughs> no, <laughs> although that would have been even funnier. Um, so I, f- I leap out of bed and I f- practically fall on my ass getting out of the bed. And I look up, I'm like, okay, well, I mean, obviously I can't leave it. I can't. I can't just go sleep on the couch. I have to deal with it. So and Ty- I go- and Tyler doesn't do spiders, right? He would, but it's one in the morning. Everyone's asleep. And so I go downstairs, I get my vacuum and we have one of those vacuums where you plug it in the wall and it just like 
it's like an insurance. What are those ones? The house vacuums were. Oh yeah, the whole house where you just whole house vacuum. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I shove the thing in there. I'm like, well, good morning, everyone. I'm waking you all up because it's very loud, and. So I go to suck the the spider Don't off the wall. Did you have to get kind of close to it though? I have a long arm on the thing. God, it it would have had to have been like fifteen feet for me to. It even, was only like, like four. It was not long enough. Oh, that's too so, close. Well, here is the thing. I, it was either that or never sleep in my room because ever again. I get like the closer I get, like the more my oh, God. arms become like noodles, and I'm I just like I can't hold this. Ah. It was so terrible, <laughs> and so I went to suck it, and the thing was so big that it took a minute. Like it was able to cling to the wall. <gasps> I thought you were going to say it jumped or something. No! Oh, my God! Paula, we would not be having this show. I would be dead. (laughs) I would have been dying. I would have died. So it sucked off into the thing, and it was so big that I could hear it clinking down the hose. Oh, my God. It was so big. I was like, I hate my life right now so much, and it was only the first night. I still had another night to go. Okay. Before I was alone. <laughs> I'll ask you again for the tenth time. What? Why don't you guys have fucking pest control? Oh, well, listen, that th- we don't have pests. We have in a, a have random spiders all the time. Well, because we live by the the river, I mean it's just not possible. I mean we can try, but I mean this house is pretty pest proof. But I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying a little squirt around the perimeter may help. <laughs> Yeah, well, Daryl did talk about doing that, so maybe that'll occur. That will occur. We don't get spiders in our house. We have monthly, no. or we have semi-monthly, per- or not semi-monthly, whatever. It's like quarterly or something. I don't know. They come out every couple of months and do like a spray. every other month or something. They spray. They take down the webs. You That's know, good. if I say that we've noticed like something in the yard, they'll spray the lawn mm. and. They'll spray, spray the perimeter of the fence, then the perimeter of the house. If we think there's something in the garage, they'll spray the garage. So, All right. So really quick, for some reason, there was this really weird theme going on in my life. Everything was about eyes. And eyes. so, I yeah, and you know, sometimes you just become more aware of a certain thing. And so you feel like you're seeing them everywhere. Like when Daryl got his truck, suddenly I saw Dodge Rebels everywhere. And I said, is that a Dodge Rebel? He goes, no, that's not. That's a Dodge Ram. And it's like... When you're looking for something, then suddenly you see them everywhere. Yeah. Because you're more aware of it. Okay, so for some reason, I saw something about eyes. Oh, because my daughter was supposed to have an eye appointment this week, and it got rescheduled. And so I seem to have noticed all these things about eyes in the news. (laughs) So I wanted to talk about it. Okay, first of all, did you hear about the woman who killed herself on the metal straw? I did. Okay, so... No, wait, I forgot how she did it, though. Did she fall, I'm t- or did she sneeze, or did she, no. what did she do? I, I've got the story here. I, I've got the Reader's Digest version. Woman dies after falling on metal straw, and it goes through her eye and brain. Okay, I saw that, and of course, I immediately laughed. It's not funny, but I did. It kind of reminds me of... Okay, this is really terrible. It kind of reminds me of that show Six Feet Under. This couple was fighting, and it was the first time he ever did it in his entire life, but he slapped his wife across the face. (gasps) And they had been married for like 25 years. Oh, my God. He'd never hit her in his entire life. Well, what what does he want, an award? She turned around and (laughs) fell on... um, the grate that holds the um, the firewood and stabbed herself in the face, like through the <gasps> eye, and it killed her. <laughs> so he got murder charges. So he went I to see. jail. Yeah, but he's just like he's as like, he should. I've, he's like, I've never hit my wife before in my life. Well, you maybe know? you should never hit your wife ever. And well, he's never he going to. He'll never have another wife. But idiot. Oh, he'll be someone's bitch. Um, okay. So anyway, so she dies. Blah blah blah. She was married. To her, uh, her wife. They were married. Okay. Um, she was sixty. Okay. She was older, so it wasn't like she, it was some. I don't know. I mean, not that I don't know why it matters. I'm just so what. Sixty year old women can't be married to other women. No, 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 no. That's not what I meant. <laughs> I just meant that I thought maybe this was like incredibly random. Like she, was, somebody was at a restaurant and turned really quick and stabbed himself in the eye. Who drinks with metal straws? A lot of people do because they're, we've talked about the horrible cardboard straws. People are buying metal straws now. Well, not anymore. I won't. <laughs> so it says. Jesus. 
So his her wife said, I went to the kitchen door and could see her lying on her front at the doorway between the den and the kitchen. She was making unusual gurgling sounds. Her glass cup was lying on the floor, still intact, and the straw was still in the jar. I noticed the straw was sticking into her head. <laughs> her name oh was Elena, God. by the way. She That's fell... Cool. She fell or collapsed regularly at random due to a horse riding accident. Elena was a retired jockey. The 10 inch metal straw was in the jar's screw top lid and pierced Elena's left eye socket, causing a traumatic brain injury, according to authorities. This is what the coroner says. There is no give in them. <laughs> Wait, what? There's no give in the metal straws. I'm oh, like, no. In, okay. No okay. shit. Right. If they're someone not, does not, fall on one, no, and it's, there's no bendy end or anything. Like no, that. it's pointed it. in the wrong direction. Serious injury can occur. Serious injury, indeed. But I don't know why, but I laughed when I read it because I immediately put myself you're in those disgusting. Those, no, I'm not disgusting. You're disgusting. I know. No, I laugh because I think about if this was me, if I'm the one that you know eventually my awkward moment killed me. And the funeral. I always think about the funeral when these kinds of random accidents occur because I know my family and our gallows humor, as devastating it would be to lose one of us, the jokes would be flying. I mean, there would be no, there'd be, it would be merciless. The I would amount be like, let's of all jokes. raise a glass and have a, a metal <laughs> straw in there. I mean, always. And so I thought. If this was, I'm not saying it wouldn't be devastating to lose a I mean, sibling. Of course it would be. But to l be lost because you fell on a straw, I mean, to me is poetic and l hilarious. And yes. I hope the woman had a great sense of humor. I mean, she already was following down, falling down randomly <laughs> throughout the day because of some oh my injury. my God. That reminds me of that <laughs> movie, Dirty Rotten Scandals, where they had to put a cork <laughs> on the end of Martin Short, or not Martin Short, uh, Steve Martin's fork so he wouldn't poke himself in the eye. Remember? Yes. And he had an, already had an eye patch on. <laughs> Can you imagine if you were like brushing your teeth and then you just collapsed and choked on your toothbrush or something? I mean, this was inevitable. This poor woman had too many dangerous she, items. She needed like a full-time nurse or something just to watch well, it sounds like her wife did, but anyway. Well, apparently not <laughs> just, good enough. Well, she's like, I heard gurgling sounds. I'm like, well, did it, did it ever well, occur to you? What good is that going to help? Did you try and remove the straw, or what did you do? Did you I don't. I give, think like it was CPR over. through the straw. I mean, she gave herself her own. Uh, what are those things called? Oh, lobotomy. Like a, an aneurysm or something. She gave or? herself a lobotomy. Oh, gross. Mm. I wonder if like brain came through the straw. <gasps> well, you could just. Push, blow the straw and see what happened. I, I guess. can just see our memories pouring out, and <laughs> <laughs> she didn't because have a it was in the, the right frontal lobe. I bet she just this didn't have a disgusting. thought in the world. She was just daydreaming. <laughs> they said she was brain dead. <laughs> God, <laughs> we're the worst. But see, that's the thing. It's like for me, if if let's say I was the dummy who who died. I would ex fully expect puns the entire time. I would be like, my you, my you googly is not going to be on how right. much I remember Jamie, but it's going to be a series of puns and awful jokes, Mom. Because I this apologize. is what she would this is what she would have wanted, <laughs> Mom. I apologize. You might want to leave the room. <laughs> she would not. She, she would, would not, not appreciate those at all. Well, then you know what? You guys can you can roast me at the uh, after party. It's true. <laughs> then you can just do the, the, the original. The original you googly will be uh, lovely, but uh, the pa the after party is when the gallows humor comes out. Be prepared, everyone. There will be a lot of alcohol. We fully expect you to participate. She would have wanted it this way. There'll be nothing but wine and crown royal on the table. <laughs> that and a lot of metal straws. Oh God, no! Mom oh would be like, God. "This is absolutely disgraceful." We're going home. <laughs> She's like, Paul and I are leaving. <laughs> That's okay. It's been 15 minutes. You're about due. <laughs> so just ask somebody to take care of a baby and she'll be out. Seriously. So, <laughs> so all right. So there's that. So, you know, uh, rest in peace, Lena. Elena. We're sorry. Elena, we're sorry. All right. So here's the other thing. And I thought this was actually kind of cool. There is a new app called Be My Eyes. And as a blind or low vision person, whenever you need visual assistance, 
volunteers are happy to help. Through the live video call, you and a volunteer can communicate directly and solve a problem. The volunteer will help guide which direction to point your camera, what to focus on, or when to turn on your torch. Oh, uh, probably a light. Is what, this is English. As a sighted volunteer, you can help just by installing the Be My Eyes app. A blind or a low vision user may need help with anything from checking expiration dates, colors, reading instructions, or navigating new surroundings. So basically, you download this app called Be My Eyes, and if you are if you want to be of assistance to someone, basically they will use the app saying I need help, and they'll like press a button or whatever, and it will send an SOS out, and whoever answers the call will be given like a video chat call and they'll be like, hey, I dropped something. Can you see where it is? And they'll like move their phone around so you can see and you go, yeah, it's right there to the left or whatever. Or if they're like at a store and they can't read something or prescriptions, anything. Now, I think it's a really great idea and I love it because it comes from a super great place. Because if you're a single person and or maybe you're a widow and you're older and you can't see or maybe your helper isn't there and you need to do something, you can use this app. And hopefully the person on the other end has good intentions. See, and I not... think it sounds incredibly dangerous. That's that's exactly what I was going to say. Is like, as long as they have good intentions, you know, then it's a great idea. Unless they talking dirty to blind people or be like, oh, it's under your nightgown. You know, There's some kind of, sick. you know what? There's all kinds of kinks. And for sure, that probably happens. But Here, in the let meantime... me read your prescription <laughs> number again. Does that say Norco on it? yeah you know that kind of stuff does concern me a bit because humans are terrible people they are yeah and so it does worry me that there will be people who don't have good intentions who sign up for the be my eyes app but i I just think it's a horrible idea unless they're like completely vetting them which i'm sure they're not no you can i literally almost download i could download the app myself yeah, it takes next yeah. to nothing. No, I, I was like, well, That's I guess... That's just basically like, inviting a complete stranger in your house to, like, you know, rumble through your shit. Look at shit. your stuff. I mean, I just... <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But... It's a really bad idea. It's... Well, actually, it's a good idea. It's just bad people. That's the problem. Right. Is there are bad people. Now, if they do vet these people, uh, great then I think it's a really great idea. And it does help. I, I read a bunch of um, stories where people assisted them in locating things that they had dropped or reading instructions that they couldn't see because maybe they, I don't know. See, the thing for me is, is it's like, what situation is it that you're so visually compromised that you don't have someone with you all the time or you're out in public and you don't have glasses or something and you use the app instead? To me, that's a little unusual. Yeah, but I guess. It's I mean, more I like, know I know blind people can like live on their own and stuff. Well, yes, they do, but my point is is that why would you need an app if you were already so visually compromised? You have other things in in place unless Maybe it's you just like got a, like your eyes dilated that day or something. Maybe. I don't know if I would download a whole app for that. And it's only cuz that's only a few hours, but I hear what you're saying. Maybe they had LASIK surgery and they couldn't see for 3 days. But that's why they give you that giant sleeping pill. So that way you'll like, you know, you just sleep, sleep through the mending process. And then when you wake up, your eyes work. I don't know. I don't even really know how to. I don't know. It seems like a dumb idea to me. But. They should have asked people like us if this was a good idea. I'll be your eyes. I'm sure you will. It's probably a quote from some stupid movie they saw. Be my eyes. <laughs> well, it actually, is- you know what? It reminds me of Robin Hood, that movie where they had the old man riding a horse. He's like, be my eyes or uh, see me through the darkness because he had his eyes scratched out by something. Oh. And so he no, he tells the horse, guide me, guide me, be my eyes or something like that. Weird. I wonder if that's where they got that. You know, that movie, they did have really bad like English accents. Maybe that's what it is then. Or maybe people in the UK or England or Europe or wherever they are over there, they just have like, <laughs> they're more trustworthy. I don't really know. They're I don't not know. bad people. I don't know. Um, they don't okay. commit crimes like good old America. Oh, mm-hmm. they do. Um, okay, so this one is about someone not paying attention and not seeing something. And, and I think as... Um, People in relationships will totally get this, especially if you've been in a relationship for more than a few years. This has happened in some degree. Uh, This poor husband 
in Massachusetts accidentally sold a vintage bike that was gifted to his wife by her father more than 45 years ago and is now desperate to get it back. He sold his wife's 1970 Moto Bican French touring bike during a neighborhood yard sale last month. Okay, and this is how I know that this has been, this, this he has been filleted by his wife because of this. He okay. says, I was reckless and inconsiderate, and I took for granted how important the bike was. The bike... Is he, is he reading, a like, a note or something? <laughs> Blink twice! Uh, the bike, which sat... Right. And, this, see, this is how I know that this has been a fight. This is like their chalkboard fight, and this is why I'm reading you this story, because I, I think you can probably understand. It sounds like he's reading a story, too. <clears throat> the bike, which sat unused in the couple's garage for more than 40 years... Was so given he, got, to, he got to use the word unused. <laughs> right. Was given to her by her dad when she was 16. The bike is absolutely priceless to not only my wife, but to her family, my children, <laughs> and my future grandchildren. <laughs> which, and then he goes, which I didn't know. <laughs> he put the bike up for sale on a whim. Lies. He did that to get it out of the garage because he was sick of seeing it. Having been distracted, having been distracted by counting money and managing transactions during the yard sale, he let it. He sold it. He says he'll do whatever it takes to get it back. It was important to my wife. I didn't realize how much, and that was my biggest mistake I've made this year so far. Wow. He says he's you been pulling. What? He's been pulling out all the stops since he quote unquote accidentally sold the bike on June twenty seventh. Having scoured bike shops and posting online, his efforts even got the attention of former Massachusetts Senator John Kerry, asking people to help this poor man find his wife's bike. <laughs> you know, it just makes me really. I mean, look, talk about you I, know. Listen, if. <laughs> Every I'm just couple. trying to say, I'm just trying to say, like, I understand, like, mistakes happen and stuff. Right. But I, no man would ever mm -hmm. emasculate a woman so much to where she would have to, like, publish something like that, humiliating herself. Like, that would never be acceptable. If you had a, con a source of contention in your relationship... That has been an ongoing argument for 20 plus years. And then he finally did something beyond the pale of just an argument right. that happened every summer when they cleaned out that garage. Uh, yeah. I mean, this was the thing is, is that he probably did know how important that bike was. But because it, it just sat there for four, 40 years, Paula. Yeah. 40 years is a long time. I mean, don't they have an attic or something they can put it in? Or? I don't know. All I know is that he's swearing. He swears it was on accident. I believe him. Um, but this woman is rightly devastated. I, no, I mean, I get that. I mean, I totally get I don't, that. I don't but think she's the one that is forcing him to go public with it. I mean, he just put up flyers in the neighborhood and somebody got got wind of the flyer and went went to the news about it locally. And then it just went viral as things tend to do. But I so. just feel like, you know, the way that whole thing was written, I mean, mm -hmm. clearly that's how she's made him feel. Oh, he probably feels uh, awful. Uh, but I mean, the the exact words that were being stated well, my guess I mean, those is that sounds like specific <laughs> quotes yes absolutely and i'm just like i if yes. you were truly married to someone and being a partner to someone why would you ever want them to have to say something like that well he no 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 no, no. he was just being quoted from the camera interview this is he wasn't reading a statement it's just all i know is that i i completely understand what this couple is going through because when you've been together long enough there's always a thing that never goes away and it's yeah. always there. It's this, this, the chalkboard, the, you know, somebody has a car in the garage that's never going to be restored. In fact, we went to our friend's house. This was last year. We went to their friend's house and uh, the wife goes, oh, you want to see the car that will literally never leave our life? And I said, what is it? So we go into the garage and it's an old Volkswagen full of stuff that does not run. And he swears he's going to restore it one day and he will Sounds never like ever. 
Sounds like our dad's. <laughs> he will never, ever get rid of it. And she's like, he would not get, he will not get rid of this no matter what I do, no matter what I say. And, you know, the husband comes in, he goes, I love that bug. It's my life. I'll never let it go. And it's like, you know, they have gone rounds on this since they've been married. And they've only been married like five years. So or oh, a long, longer than that, like eight years. But my point is, is that every couple has that. Every couple has something that they won't get rid of. Or they or they they argue about it all the time or not all the time, but it comes up. You know, it's like when I bring up the chalkboard, Daryl's like, I told you. I said, I don't want to talk about it. I mean, I don't want to talk about it. He's like, it doesn't even exist anymore. I'm like, it exists in my mind. You know, it's like it's one of those things. This bike was one of those things. Wow. I hope I never have one of those things. You will. You will. We all do. Everyone does. If you're in a relationship long enough, there is the thing. There's the thing. For example, we have a friend who has jukeboxes. You think that hasn't, you don't think they've gone rounds on that? (laughs) Well, I think that's why ultimately he was squandered to like one small location. (laughs) They go rounds on that. I'm telling you, they've been married for 20 years. Yeah. It's a thing. you're You're right. You know, that's so a, so what I'm saying is that it happens. La La Land happens. It's not a deal breaker, but it's something. And then he, so this guy went the next step. Now I think, I think it was an accident, but he also goes, "I've crossed a line." Yes, we've gone rounds on the bike, but to but sell to it, sell it is just, yeah, you know, that yeah, was a big. No-no. It was that was next level, and that was diabolical. And so now he's desperate to get it back because he loves his wife, and he feels terrible. And then add to the fact, which I removed this from the story till the end of it, her father s- uh, survived the Holocaust, and so to get this bike so from him, what did he him, do? Ride the bike, saving you know the the Jews? It I doesn't mean, matter. Just... No, they're all Jewish. <laughs> Everybody's oh. <just> Jewish. <laughs> Well, but, I didn't know. Well, I, did, I just eliminated. I didn't think that the names were important. I just wanted to give you the ba- the basic rundown. But when you add that, they added that hoping that whoever bought it would return it. And so. Well, of course they're not. Now they know it's worth something. <laughs> well, it's worth something anyway. It's a really nice bike, apparently. So anyway, I was just like, see what happens when you take your eye off the ball? This. Eyes. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> well, I mean, they should have at least like had it hanging up on the side of the wall or in the attic. I know. Or All I can think is, just was not it just... in the garage. I mean, if it's that valuable, just don't have it laying around where it can get, you know, smashed by something or, you know. Well, and the thing is, Paula, is I bet those words have been uttered out of his Probably. face when they've had if these it's so arguments. so valuable, then why is it right? just lying around in the garage? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and she's like, don't you talk about that bike. My father gave me that bike. He's like, yes, yes, oh, your father. Oh, well, decide where it goes <laughs> it is I'll up to me it's, value. it's not for you to decide it's mine and then <laughs> you know when it was accidentally still she's like where's my bike what where, where, where is it been? where's the bike oh what what, what bike what bike you, you know. know what bike the bike the one that you complain about every summer when we have to clean out the garage oh i, I just you put it the garage for the, the yard set. i put it on the side over here and i just did it <gasps> sold? You sold my bike, my you Holocaust sold bike. The bike? You sold the but Holocaust bike? How could you do that? You sell it to? I don't know. I, I thought I don't remember. I know there was a man that asked to buy a bike for ten dollars, <laughs> but I don't remember what bike it was. I thought it was the. I thought it was our daughter's. You sold my bike for ten dollars. That was going to my grandchild. <laughs> we don't have grandchildren. Well, we will. We will. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't know it was so important. You knew. I brought this bike into our marriage and I was going to take it out. You monster. You bastard. I'll I'm going to speak to you for the rest of the month. You He's get like, that bite back. I don't care what it takes. You get that bite back or never come back. Until you have that bike back, you are not welcome in my home. <laughs> Honey, I'm like, no! That a word. I said my piece. My children. I said good day. <laughs> my children and I will have nothing to do with you until this is resolved. <laughs> Isn't it funny how it is because my children, my yes, house. Yes. Yes. <laughs> my bike. Oh my god. He no longer belongs to anything and no longer has a home. He's been set adrift. 
It's over for him, mister. He's on his own. Calls okay. a friend and trying to explain the situation. He's like, what? What, what kind of bike? What, what was it? He goes, you know? well, he goes, oh, wait a minute. He goes, Jan just told me, yeah, you can't come over here. <laughs> yeah, she just called. She I, just sorry, called. Man. My wife said you're not allowed to come over until you get the bike. Sorry, man. I Sorry, I man. I wish I could help couch, you. But Do you need some money? <laughs> my wife doesn't want to see you right now. Yeah. The wives have united. You are screwed. <laughs> yeah. That is true. All right. Well, let's go to our ugly and awkward moments of the week. So mine happened on the 4th of July. And remember how I mentioned we're actually becoming friends with one of Olivia's yes, friends. Yes. Parents. Yes. Yes. So we went over there, and uh, when we went into their house, they had a lot of people over. But a lot of um, the the parents, um, I think the dad is, like, part Filipino. Mm -hmm. And I think the mom might be, like, part Hispanic. Okay. But I think they both have white also. Okay. So they don't look, you know, <clears throat> crazy ethnic. But um, a lot of their friends there were, like, you know, Hispanic and Filipino and, you know, just a good mix of people. Yeah. And so when we walked in, they have these two dogs. And every time we come over there, they just start barking like crazy at us. Like, well, like we're the freaking enemies, you know. <laughs> and so I walked in and the dad mentioned something. And he's just like, gosh, he's like, they're always so cool with everybody. But they always bark at you guys. And I'm like, well, maybe they don't like white people. <gasps> <And> so <laughs> <gasps> Oh I thought God. it was funny. Oh and he just kind of looked at me weird. <laughs> so. Wow. <laughs> I, well, you know my sixth sense of humor. It's just. Well, yeah, but you don't even know these people. Well, we kind of do, but I mean, I just. I thought it was funny. Well, I would so. think it was funny if it was me, but, but I then also afterwards, know you. Uh, Victor looked at me. He's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like what? I thought it was funny. <laughs> so well, I, I mean, maybe I, maybe I was nervous, but I just, yeah, it just kind of it just slipped right out. Like, like you know, no I don't understand. I'm like, First well, of all, just don't like white people. Okay, listen, I don't know what it is about you and our sister Stephanie, but you guys have to stop acting like you're white. Okay, you're not white. You're half. You're a white Latina, and that's a thing. I understand that, but I had literally just got my hair done, so I'm like as blonde as can be. Yeah, and I have blue eyes, <laughs> and I, I, I'm thin. So I mean, what? there's really oh, what? nothing so, about me that screams Mexican. Oh, what? So you're a white supremacist? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I'm saying I don't look Mexican. I know, I know. When's the last time you've seen a skinny Mexican, Jamie? Oh, there's a lot of them. Not me, but I know. Not a not a ton. Most of them have curves. I have the I have a the ass of a pancake. <laughs> you look like a frog. It's true. I mean, nothing. You wouldn't look at me and be like, "I wonder what ethnicity is." You know what? She looks Mexican. I that, bet that, you. That, I bet you. Bottom dollar. That girl is Mexican. I bet you her flat bottom dollar that that girl is Mexican. <laughs> I know, although they said no one ever. Honestly, there it is funny to me because I don't think I look Mexican either. In fact, any and I, I oh, told please. my own, I told my father in law, I'm like, dude, I'm half Mexican. He goes, No, you're not. I'm like, Yes, I am. I'm like, Where have what you been? Do you, think you are. I don't know. I'm like, What do you think? I'm just just fat. I'm like, I don't know. Like, where do you think these boobs and ass come from? Do you think that normal and people these giant eyes and brown hair? <laughs> well, my hair's kind of blonde right now, but yes, yes. What do you think I am Scottish? <laughs> you know. Italian? No. no. Anyway, I, and you know what? I, I don't know. Was there ever a time when ethnicity didn't matter? Like, did was there ever a time in this the country's history where anyone gave two fucks about where what you were or where you came from? I don't think so. They only care when you tell them, well, no, or they accuse you of it. <laughs> when they Trust me, no one ever accused me of being a Mexican. <laughs> I know, I'm aware. <laughs> Even Dad tried to avoid being a Mexican. Well, that's because Dad endured a lot of racism when he was growing up. A lot. Yeah, that's true. A ton. I don't know why. I mean, he lived in Chicago. No, right? no, 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 no. He lived in California his whole life. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it no, was our mother. Mom, moved, mom was in Chicago and moved to Sunnyvale. In fact, our mother endured. Um, 
she it was reverse racism actually I, I don't know is that even a thing is reverse racism a thing well i mean she lived in people, chicago and she lived in the south side of chicago and where she lived the neighborhoods were broken up by a uh, culture and so she lived on the street where all the Polacks were <laughs> and so at least that's that's the way she said it she's not even polish no she's not she was a uh, scottish scottish swedish but um that's where they that's the street they lived on but behind them was the african-american and oh. um, so when she would walk home every day, uh, those girls, because, you know, our mother basically was a super tiny, skinny, blonde girl, yeah, super pale. Like mm-hmm. And so when she would walk home from school, um, those girls from the other neighborhood would chase her and they were mean to her. And um, so she would run. She had to, she had to run home almost every day because they would chase her because she wasn't black. And she one time ran, and she I think she said she was seven, and she oh said God. this big group of kid, the big group of g- girls from the other street were chasing me, and I fell and I broke my arm on a manhole, and I had to keep running because they were gonna <sighs> they were gonna grab her, and I'm like, I, I know that I don't know what it's like. I just know the South Side of Chicago is brutal. And ask anybody who grew up there back in the 50s, and they'll tell you it was not an easy place to be. Now, my, I asked my mom, I said, would you ever go back and see where you grew up? And she's like, oh, God, no. You, It's, like, really bad there now. I mean, it was bad when I was there, but families at least lived there when I was there. But now it's really sketchy. Like, you, yeah. you would not go there during even during the daytime where she grew up. That's pretty bad. Wow. Yeah. So I said, well, that's kind of sad. She goes, no, it's fine. <laughs> she's like I, I, yeah. I have no desire to go back but well uh, I mean fortunately she moved when mm-hmm. she wasn't too much older so. yeah so both of our parents endured racially profily type of yeah. harassment yeah hardcore that's why they made such a great couple that's probably what kept them together <laughs> <laughs> actually I was just thinking about that last night because mom was dating that guy Marty and dad mm-hmm. was dating some other chick. I can't remember her name. But they were all friends. Mm-hmm. I thought dad and Marty were friends. And then I was trying to think. I'm like, so how did dad end up with mom? I don't know. Other they than so I young. know his I know his charming ways. They were <laughs> so he probably, young. <laughs> he was probably able to seduce mom away. Oh, who so. knows? I, I, I read the love letters. So. Oh, dad wrote her love letters? Oh, she, tons. Tons. Oh, God. That's gross. Well, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right, uh, my ugly and awkward moment, now that you've accused people of training a dogs to attack white people. Um, no, my- I did not say they were <laughs> training them. I just was suggesting that they don't see them very often. Okay. Uh, my ugly and awkward moment d- happened during the spider at 1 a.m. I was, like I said, I've got insomnia, and you know, a lot of women my age in their 40s get it, and I think it's a hormone thing. And Uh-oh. so it really is. I, you know, like I told Daryl, I said, look, I'm getting old. I don't know what to say. He goes, no, you're not getting old. It's just from, you know, our vacation and the stress. I'm like, look, you can label it any way you want, but I'm getting older. And this shit happens to women. OK, it just does. I'm not going to you know, stop being in denial about it. It happens. So does it bother him? The idea of the loaf drawing up? I don't know. You know, I did. I make sh- I definitely double check to make sure all is well down there. Everything's fine. There's no problems no, down know, there. I know, but I'm just but saying like the idea of you just becoming, getting older like, menopausal would that like bother him? I asked him that actually. I asked him that. And I said, you know, is this I go you you're so adamant that that's not happening. I said I I'm starting to worry that it bothers you. And he's like, "No, no, not at all. I just I know it bothers you." And I said, "Yeah." I'm starting to think it's not just me. (laughs) Yeah, because what if you start getting like hot flashes and stuff like that? Right? Or just what if I turn into a crazy person because I'm going through menopause one day? What if you get vaginal dryness? That'll never happen. And you don't know. What if you guys have to start using lube? Stop. Stop it. How dare you? (laughs) Stop it. Oh my god! I would. I no. None of that's gonna. No. Stop. Anyway, I'm not become even like those people on the KY commercials. I'm not even fifty. I'm not. I'm still in my forties. It's not. Anyway, uh, so I said no. I. I no. So anyway, I've got this insomnia, 
And I'm like, you know what? I need to take something to go to sleep, like a Benadryl or whatever. Well, I have CBD oil, and it does actually make me mm. quite sleepy. And so I hadn't taken any yet. So I took a little dropper full of CBD oil, and I had it in my mouth. And that's when I looked up and saw the spider on the wall. I was oh. so afraid. I got so scared and so alarmed that I bit down on the glass dropper. Oh! I didn't even realize I did it because I got so tense and scared that I bit down hard and I felt like I almost broke the glass dropper with my teeth. Oh my God. I thought you were going to tell me you did break no, it. No, no. Well, there's a little bit of a, there's a little like etch from my like tooth. Like hairline thing yep. or something. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, wow. holy shit. I'm like, you know, I really could have hurt myself. <laughs> I'm like, God damn. So yeah, that was my awkward moment. Whoa. Yeah. That could have been really scary. God. I know. That's pretty bad. My kids, they're ridiculous. So I went on to turn on the garbage disposal today. Yeah. And there was clearly something in there. Oh, yeah. Like, not food, but a foreign matter. Right, right. And so I put my hand out there, and Olivia's like, Mom, no, what are you doing? I'm like, Olivia, there's <laughs> something in there. I have to get it out. Yes. And so I'm fishing around, and I find something that feels like a rock. Oh. And so I pull it out. And it was like ceramic or something. And I'm like, Ryan, what? I'm like, did you break a plate or something? He's like, no. I'm like, did you break a bowl? And he's like, no. I'm like, did you break like a mug? He's like, yeah, I broke a mug. What and did I'm he just, just like, come forward with that instead of I making like, you do the interrogation? <laughs> I think he just doesn't think sometimes, you know? God. So I'm like, well, when you do things like that, make sure you get it all. So that way, you don't, you know, you don't it break end anything. up in the garbage disposal or you don't just rinse it down the drain and miraculously think it's just going to go away. Dumb. <laughs> you know? But, All right. Uh, well, anyway, so yes, yeah, so those are the ugly and awkward moments of the week. Um, I feel like we're a bit on edge this week, but I think that we did a good show. Yeah, it was just a little iffy. I'm always on edge when I'm alone with the kids for <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, yeah. there's just stuff to do and... You know, mm -hmm. they, they of course they always look to me for entertainment. And well, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing if Olivia likes her gift. I'm sure she's gonna love it. Um, so. uh, although now two packages are coming. One is for her, and one is for you to assist with hers. Actually, oh, okay. by the time this airs, you'll already know what it is. So I'm sure you'll post a picture of it. But anyway, um, I can't Perfect. wait. But anyway, um, I think that's it for me. Do you have anything else? No, I think that's pretty much a wrap. Just to remind everybody that I think starting Monday is Prime Membership Days, the 15th and the 16th. You can get special deals at Amazon. So please go to UglyTruth.com, click on the Amazon button if you don't already have it bookmarked. And then uh, do some shopping. Look at all the fun stuff they have on sale. I will be looking because I am in the market for some new clothes. Yes. We did attempt to go shopping yesterday, and it was a fail. And so, Ugh. you know, I just, because the size I was last summer and the size I am now are like 30 pounds different. Yes, and so, so you need smaller clothes. I'm wearing like the same pair of shorts every day. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and Ryan's old band t-shirts that he doesn't fit anymore. So <laughs> I've got to... <laughs> I've got to up my wardrobe a bit. Time to stop looking like an unemployed 20-year-old. <laughs> or, yeah. Like Hanging out at her boyfriend's house every day. <laughs> a 13-year-old girl. Yes. So... Other than that, have a fabulous rest of your weekend. Stay cool, keep in touch, get laid in the shade, and we'll uh, see you on Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.